In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to set a listing appointment to take one to four new listings every single month. This is the exact framework and script that I use to just take this $1.2 million expired listing, how I'm gonna get paid out 35 grand in just a few weeks from that, and how I've made multiple six figures doing this. Before I explain to you exactly how I take expired listings, I wanna break down two things first. Number one is what this video is about. It's going to be the framework of how to set a listing appointment in a way that the seller wants to meet with you. The part after that you need to know is when you're at the appointment, how do you walk out of that meeting with a signed agreement? This is going to be covered in the next video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and watch out for that next one. Now I'm gonna give you a deep dive on exactly how to set a listing appointment. Make sure you listen to all this because this is gonna be a lot of information, but this is gonna be the best information available on YouTube, I promise you. Okay, so before you begin, you need to understand the mindset of an expired seller. These people are getting blown up all day because their home didn't sell on the market and now it's marked as an expired or a canceled listing. So agents like you and I are dialing them all day, bothering them with terrible scripts and terrible dialogue, interrogating the sellers on why their home didn't sell. And obviously the seller's plans are completely ruined. This was a big commitment for them to put their house on the market, to move, to change the direction of their lives. And now they're frustrated, they're upset, they're bothered by us. And you need to make sure that you're speaking to them in a way that cuts through all the noise and in a way that they want to tell you everything that's going on so that you can resolve those issues for them, get them to their original goal and have them want to meet with you by the end of the call. That's the perspective you need to understand about the sellers. They're upset and irritated and they don't want you to call. Now let's dive into the framework. First, you need a short and concise introduction that gets straight to the point. Next, you need the motivation and the problem. And you need these two things in order to close because the closing is based on getting them their motivation by resolving the problems they faced last time. Once you get the motivation and problem, you hit them with a pre-close that tees them up to say yes to the actual close. And the closing is where you give them the solution. To break this down, it sounds like this. Um, the intro is, hey, my name is Aaron. I'm with eXp Realty. I'm calling about your property on Main Street. Is that still for sale? Let me break that down. Hey, this is Aaron with eXp Realty. In one second, I've immediately explained to you who I am and I am with a company. I am with a, maybe they don't know what eXp is, but they know what the word realty is. They can assume that, hey, this is a guy named Aaron from a real estate brokerage. Hey, my name is Aaron. I'm with eXp Realty. I'm calling about your property on Main Street. I told them exactly what I'm calling about. Is that still for sale? There's the premise. I, I've, I've introduced myself ex and, and ex immediately explained the premise. There was no fat, no wasted time. I immediately got to the point. Next, they can say yes or no. Most of the time, they're going to say no. But don't take that no as a no. You can dig in. So usually, regardless of whether say, they say no or yes, I'll get into why later. Maybe I'll do that in a different video. But you usually wanna ask them about the problem. What went wrong last time? Did your agent give you any feedback on why it didn't sell? That question is designed to give you the problem. Or it, another sentence could sound like, what happened last time? Do you know why your home didn't sell? Do you know why you guys didn't get any offers? These kinds of questions will elicit a problem. Um, and they could say something like, oh, the interest rates were too high, so we didn't get the price we want. Or uh, we weren't able to find the next house, so we took our house off the market. Or I don't know, our agent just kind of ghosted us after they listed the house and we didn't hear from him. These are problems that your seller is giving you and you need to save that in your mind. So really quick, acknowledge that they said that, oh man, that sucks. I'm sure you really wanted to um, get the property sold. Where were you planning on going? Where were you planning on going is a question that elicits a motivation answer. It was their original reason of why they put the home on the market. So that could also sound like, why'd you put your house on the market in the first place? Questions like that will elicit motivation answers. And they could tell you something like, I wanted to move over to Texas. Okay, great. Texas, what's got you moving to Texas? And notice how I'm digging further 
Texas is not a motivation. It's the location that their motivation is in. So they could say something like, my family is over in Texas. Oh, okay, great. You're a family guy. I love that. Well, Bob, it sounds like, and now I'm about to, I'm about to hit him with the pre-close. I'm going to take the motivation that I got and the problem that I got and um, offer a solution to them. Bob, it sounds like as long as we can make this make financial sense for you, you'd still be interested in moving over to Texas to be with your family, right? Right? I, I'm forcing them into a yes. So that the only logical answer for them to say is, yeah, that is exactly what I want. That's the whole reason why I put the house on the market in the first place. And that was the problem that I experienced last time. Yes, I still want these things. After they give you that yes, that tees you up for the close, which sounds like this. Okay, great. Well then, Bob, before we make any decisions, let's get together and go over exactly what we can do this next time around to get your property sold for top dollar and move you closer to your family in Texas. And if it makes financial sense for you, you can make a decision from there. I got time at four or six, what works best for you? So the close is the solution to the problem to get them to their motivation. And if it makes financial sense for you, you can make a decision from there. I'm leaving it on to them saying, hey, you, it's, it's your decision. I'm not going to force you into anything, or at least that's what it implies. I got time at four or six, what works best for you? I specifically give them two times for the same day. Because if I say, hey, you got time at five? If they say no, I have to be like, oh, well, can you do seven? And now we're playing this game of where can I find some open time for you? Because if you ask too many questions, they're gonna be like, you know what? Um, call me back next week. And you just lost your opportunity. And speaking of asking too many questions, during this whole scenario, it won't go as smoothly as it did in this example I gave you, but you have a limited amount of questions you can ask your prospect. If you're asking too many questions, you're gonna be hit with objections or kind of like a, a shit test, meaning, oh man, should I get into this right now? I should, okay, all right. In the beginning, if you're asking them too many questions and they don't trust you or you're asking low quality questions, they're gonna, in the beginning of the call, they can, they can give you something like, what are you calling about? Do you have a buyer? Do you, if you have a buyer, you, you can reach out. They're gonna throw stuff like that at you in the beginning of the call if you're taking too long to get to the point, if you're asking low quality questions, if you're asking too many questions, they're gonna be like, all right, what's the point here? Why, do you just want a listing? Do you actually have a buyer? Like they're, they're like, qualify yourself. Hurry up and qualify yourself. And that means the call's not going so great. So you need to be able to handle those objections. But at the end of the call, after you close, that's another area where objections can appear. And those are different sets. Those are different kinds of objections. Those are actually problems that were not discovered on the call. So if someone says, ah, nah, um, I can't wait. I can't meet. I'm just going to wait. There's an objection. But that's a very vague objection. So you need to specify. Yeah, that, that's fine, Bob. I understand. Plans have changed. What's exact, what, what exactly is stopping from meeting with me? Right there, I'm just asking him to specify his vague objection. Well, uh, my wife and I were going to wait to uh, relist it in the summertime. That's the I want to wait objection. Or you can get a, you know, we're just going to relist with our same agent um, later on. That's the same agent objection. Or whatever it may be, this is where additional problems will surface and it's up to you to solve that problem and handle that objection and to take that objection away. And after you take these objections away, you can go back in for the close. So the framework looks like this. Let me break it down to you again. It's intro, motivation and problem, pre-close, and then close. But if they give you an objection after you close, it goes objection handle, pre-close, close. close. Objection handle, pre-close, objection handle, pre-close, close. It, it just, it's, just a, it's just a loop of objection handle and then pre-close until you close. So that's the framework of how to set the listing appointment. That's the framework of conversion on how to set a listing appointment. And if I were to give you one super important key about this, it's to make sure that this is a conversation, not an interrogation. I was super guilty of this. One of my coaches... Um, he changed my life when I when he taught this to me and understanding this changed my conversion rate by like 
a hundred X. It's crazy. So when you're asking someone a question and they respond, and then you ask another question and they respond and you ask another question. And if, if that's the cycle you're using, you are interrogating the prospect and no one wants to be on the phone with someone that's interrogating them. Hey, did your agent give you any feedback on why your home didn't sell? No, we didn't get any feedback. Where were you planning on going after the home sold? We wanted to go to Texas. What's over in Texas? My family's over there. Why do you want to go see your family? It, this is, that, that's an interrogation and that's a very unpleasant thing to be a part of. The seller sees no issue hanging up on someone interrogating them on the phone. They, they're not going to want to talk to you. However, if you're going to conversate with them, that's a completely different story because it's really hard to hang up on someone having a conversation with you. Hey, I saw your home came off the market. Did your agent give you any feedback on why your home didn't sell? Yeah, um, I don't know. My agent just listed the home and we didn't hear him. We didn't hear from him for, for months. Oh, what? That's terrible. Okay, so I'm expecting you're gonna want some communic better communication from your next agent. Um, what had you list your home on the market in the first place? So notice how before I asked that, what, had, what, what made you list your home on the market in the first place? Before I asked that, I acknowledged what he said by reacting, being like, oh wow, that sucks. I'm sure your next agent you would want better communication out of. That's called a statement of acknowledgement. I'm acknowledging what you said with a statement of my own. I'm contributing to this conversation and now it's becoming a, a dialogue instead of an interrogation. And on the seller's end, he's going, oh, this is, this is a real person. This is not a robocaller. This is not a VA from the Philippines. This is a real person having a conversation with me. And when, when, as soon as the seller realizes that, he's going to be more willing to answer all your questions with, with full answers He's going to want to meet with you if you can de deliver him his motivation and the solution to his problem. He's going to want to participate in whatever you're offering if you're, a if, you're, if you're proving that you can get him to what he wants and that you're a real person. So yeah, I wanted to move over to Texas. Oh, I love Texas. I actually uh, lived there for a year. What's got you moving over to Texas? Well, I got a bunch of family over in Houston. Okay, yeah, I got some friends down in Houston. Maybe they know each other. So Bob, it sounds like as long as we can get your house sold this next time around and move you close to your family over in Houston, that's exactly what you're looking for, right? Yeah, but I don't know if I want to do that at this point. Yeah, that's all right, Bob. I understand. Plans change. Statement of acknowledgement. What exactly is stopping you from wanting to meet today, Bob? Well, I got uh, some stuff to take care of around the house before... Here, here's the objection. I got some stuff to take care of around the house before we get, get ready to sell. Okay, that's fine, Bob. I understand. You know, the house is probably not ready uh, since you've been off the market for six months. What exactly do you need to take care of? Again, I'm specifying. I need to, I need to dig in to find what the problem is. Well, we, we, uh, the kitchen had a leak recently and it kind of flooded the whole area. So we need to redo the flooring and the whatever. Oh, wow. That sounds, uh, that sounds like a big task. I'm sure that's pretty annoying to deal with. Yeah, it's pretty annoying. Well, look, Bob, how's this, uh, how's the renovation been going? Have you... Have you locked in any contractors? How's this? How's the progress of this going? Well, we haven't really done anything um, yet. It just kind of happened last week, and uh, we need to figure some things out. Okay, Bob. Well, it sounds like um, since nothing's been started, do you have any contractors uh, that you trust? No, not really. Okay, great. Well, Bob, how about this? And now I'm about to hit him with a pre-close. I'm about to solve this problem that he gave me. Bob, let's get together. I'm going to bring over two of my best and trusted contractors. Um, we can give you live estimates on exactly how much it's going to cost to fix your kitchen issue. And we can also take a look at what the market's doing now and what it could look like if you sold your property this spring so that you could go over to Texas to be with your family. I've got time today at four or six, what works best for you? But I gave him an exact solution to his problem and I've included his motivation, which is to let's do this to get you over to your family over in Texas. And at that point, after I dug in and found his exact issue and solved it, it's very hard for him to say no to this. And if he does say no to this, I'm going to say, yeah, that's totally fine, Bob. What's st Again, I'm going to dig. What's stopping you from meeting today? And maybe he gives me another problem, um, aka objection. And it's just up to me to be like, all right, what, what, what exactly is the problem about this? I need to keep digging until I specifically understand what is the problem and then present him the solution. All right, well, it sounds like as long as we can fix that, 
get the kitchen issue resolved and then take you over to Texas to be with your family, that was exactly what you wanted to begin with, right? Yeah. And eventually there's no arguing. You can't say no to what I'm presenting you. This is, I'm giving him exactly what he wants. And if he's a motivated seller, he's going to say yes. So that is how you increase the quality of your appointments. I, I do want to stress the statements of acknowledgements are so important. I would say that is the difference between an amateur cold caller and oh, well, an amateur salesperson and a professional. Like the quality of your statements of acknowledgements is going to drastically change your conversion rate on listing appointments set. I have a brand new agent, his name is Bruce. He's still developing that skill of statements of acknowledgement. And it's not so great now, so a lot of people are hanging up on him or being like, dude, what's your point? Like, why are you, they're asking like, why are you interrogating me? What's the point of this call? Do you have a buyer? Are you, are you just looking for a listing? He's getting those kinds of objections because he's not creating a conversation. Whereas if you look at my past videos where I upload full length conversations that I have with sellers, they're having full on conversations with me. Tell me exactly what went wrong the last time, exactly why they put their home on the market because I'm conversating with them and, and giving them exactly what they need. So make sure that you're not only understanding this framework but also developing the conversational skill so that these sellers want to meet with you and work with you and stay on the phone with you and give you answers. Obviously, there's a lot of detail that I had to leave out because uh, then this video would be like six hours long. But if you want to learn everything that I know, I'm creating this eight week program where I'm holding your hand and you're going to be meeting with me and working with me directly for eight weeks straight on how to take one to four new listings every single month. I'm gonna be teaching you the psychology of this, how to sound, exactly what to say, how to handle objections, how to set a strong appointment. You're gonna be hopping on live calls with me to tell me exactly what's going wrong so I can help you fix that. You're gonna be hopping on Zoom with me and listening to me call your leads and set listing appointments for you. I'm also gonna be giving you an in-depth course that breaks down exactly each little detail on psychology and what to say that can turn a brand new agent in, into a listing machine. And of course, there's an active community with other agents who is gonna be sharing successes, testimonies, case, story, case studies, um, and you're gonna be able to send and receive referrals to agents that, that you know can close the deal. So if this sounds interesting to you, Click the link in the description below for more information. So that framework that I just gave you is exactly what I used to set the appointment for the $1.2 million listing that I just got. It's exactly the framework that I use to take any listing appointment that I get. And it's the same one that works for all of my students and agents. So now you got the listing appointment, but how do you get the agreement signed at the meeting the first time? That video I'm going to be releasing in a few days, so make sure you subscribe and watch out for that release. I'm always curious to know who makes it to the end of these videos, because these are very long and kind of boring, so I want to know exactly who you are. So in the comments down below, write, wow, this is the best script I've ever read, or something like that. Wow, this is the best framework I've ever seen. Say something like that, and I'll know who made it to the end. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next one. Subscribe.